Three years ago, me, my brother Billy, and his fiance Gwendolyn took on the mammoth task of restoring this stunning French chateau. At first, it was just the three of us. But since then, the whole family has moved in to help bring this place back to its former glory. And not forgetting the newest family member, baby Ernest. We do everything ourselves, from fixing the leaky roof, managing the vast 60 acre estate, to restoring the grand interiors back to the way they were a hundred years ago. It's not always easy, but that's what makes life in a place like this interesting. My name's Michael, and I'm going to be showing you what it's like to live, work, and play at Chateau de la Bamignée. Delivery van's arrived. Must be the drone. Well, I've got uh, something to unbox today. Well, when you came here last time, I was obsessed with his drone. And the thing is with the vlog, we've had a, we do have a small drone, but it only films in, is it 1080p? 1080p 30 frames 30, a second. Yeah. And it's not very, uh, it's not, uh, not the best footage from a drone. So, we've invested. So, Chateau de la Bamagne, and doing it ourselves is going to take to the air with the new drone. So Dan's going to help me unbox it uh, and show me how to use it so we can get epic shots on a daily basis. So when did you pick this up? So it arrived today. Arrived today. Yeah. And thankfully, I can pay for it in four instalments. Brilliant. So it's not going to be one huge outlay. Well, you know what they say about men, don't they? What? They don't grow up, their toys just get more expensive. Uh, <laughs> well, we definitely need this. All the drone a lot of the drone shots that we've got for the, that I've used so far, some of them Billy took with our drone, which is great, but it's in 30 frames a second and my vlog's for 24 frames a yeah. second. So you get choppy footage. So you get choppy footage or you have to, you can convert them to 24 frames a second, but you have to slow the footage down. So sometimes a nice drone shot goes really like yeah. too slow. So there's no movement, but this one shoots Forgotten in. Forgotten days, Michael. This one shoots in 4K, 24 frames a second. So up until now, anytime I wanted a really nice drone shot, I'm having, having to ask Dan if he can nicely come around and film some stuff for me. But now we can hopefully do it ourselves. Like the name <laughs> of the channel. <laughs> So there it is. Wow. So what do we do, Dan? Take it out of the box. Yeah. Where are your props? It must be in there. I imagine they're in there. This is, you got a different one from me. I didn't get that controller with mine. I bought that separately. It's got a really bright screen so yes. that you can actually see what your drone's doing in bright sunlight. Because normally on a phone, it, it's a bit a difficult, glare, isn't it? Yeah. So we've got that good controller. Well, you're going to have to put them on. You need to learn because you can't just put any one anywhere. Oh, these two come out oh it side. goes that way and these two come down. Right, to the okay. Oh, this is a bit more complicated than the other one I had. You should get two spares in the box, yeah. Okay. Michael's first flight. Okay, drone on, press once and then hold until yeah. all the lights fill up. And you'll see, it. there you go. It's on, let Put go. DJI noise. This is exciting, isn't it? That's Gwen, look. All right, Gwen. Right, where are we? I'll put it into normal color profile so you don't have to spend a lot of time. Yeah, is it, it so Rec 709 or? It is Rec 709. 24 frames a second. 4K, 24. That's how much time you've got left on the SD card. Okay. You ready to take off? Yeah. Right, you've got two ways. You can either grab the sticks yeah. and pull them both in opposite corners to the bottom. Yeah. Or you've got this button here. Yeah. So you press that and then you slide it along and it would take off and hover in the air. Oh. Uh, yeah. And then... And now you're in control. So, left thumb up and down. So what I like to do is put the auto expose for what you want yeah. and then lock the exposure. How do I pan down? With the camera? Yeah. Right. You've got a wheel here. Yeah. Uh, you move that to the left. There you go. 
There we go. Oh, that's a nice shot. Look at that. And we're recording still. Da -da 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 -da. Well, it looks like Philip from Chateau Life is here. What's he doing here? Let's go and have a look. What's going on in here then? I'm about to smash up oh, Philip's yeah. Range Rover. Yeah. <laughs> so, so the Range Rover is not working. No. Hello, Phil. Hello. <laughs> so I broke the Range Rover. Unfortunately, we broke the turbo on it. Right. Which is quite a difficult job. We've ordered a new one. Is that, come... is that the new one? This is the new one. Phil's come to help us yeah. to uh, fix it because he's uh, quite a good mechanic. Right. So uh, we're just sort of, sort of like figuring out how to remove the old one. Well, that's what happens when you do it yourself. <laughs> Currently, I'm trying to get on an even par with the Range Rover. We've got a slight understanding. We've drawn blood. Okay. <laughs> it's all right. So do you think you can fix it yourselves? Yeah, I reckon we can. We can do anything. Yeah? Yeah. If not, it's a £2,000 repair bill. So we, uh, we try and fix everything ourselves. Well, there you go. That's why we call the YouTube channel Doing It Ourselves. Because <laughs> we try to do it ourselves as much as possible. Yeah. You having any luck then, Phil? Yeah? Uh, come back to me in half an hour. Right, okay. <laughs> Let's just hope those little wooden blocks hold out. <laughs> if not, I love my wife. <laughs> so I'm filming you from the, your good angle. Is that yeah, your best you angle? Can't see my face. Can't see your face. <laughs> Oh look, 
That's my old refrigerator that I used to have in England. Oh my God, I can't believe it's gonna get more airtime than me. <laughs> the fridge is gonna get more airtime than you. Sorry. No, but this is gonna go in the cottage. I bought this in England on eBay, I think, and it cost me 200 pounds. Um, it's actually in quite good condition. So that's gonna go in the gardener's cottage eventually, because it looks nice and vintage. So we've got this old range cooker here, and this, you bought it from an old chateau, didn't it you? It come from a chateau uh, next to Fougere, and the village was called uh, Londion, something okay. like that. And the chateau had been completely renovated, and from the chateau they took the original stove, which is what they cooked all the meals on. Yeah. Um, and it was on, Le, I think it was on like the equivalent of the French gum tree, Le Bonquois, for yeah. about a year. Is that like Craigslist? or? Yeah, like Craigslist, yeah. yeah. They weren't asking much for it, so uh, me and Gwen decided to uh, go and have a look at it, and uh, yeah, we decided to buy it. It's quite heavy though. You wanted to put it in the basement kitchen, do you think you'll still put it in there? Yeah, we probably will, because, um, you know, the chateau is missing its original one, and it's not too far off the original size. Yeah, but actually, to be honest, you probably wouldn't want one as big as the original one in the basement kitchen, because you won't have room for a modern cooker then. No, so. of course not. No, it would just be a, more of a display piece. Just you get it all, all the beautiful stored. ovens. Yeah, so it would have been run and on coal, this one. The warming sections. Yep. And you would have put the coal in. Where would you put the coal in, Michael? In there. Well, you could have put wood in there or under the hot plate as well. Yeah, oh, the, yeah, the coal in there. You could here. have probably put logs in there as well, actually, if you didn't want it too hot. It's quite small, though. This is the ash pan. Yeah. And it doesn't like opening. Well, it's rusted through. Oh, there it's probably go. not usable. No, it definitely won't be usable. I don't but know. it'll be a beautiful ornament. Once it's all repainted it's like, and polished. It looks like one of the, one of the stoves from uh, the film Ratatouille. Oh, it does, yeah. Yeah, with all the brass <laughs> and everything. 214, I wonder what that means. It's probably the model number. It's nice. Oh, Phil's still underneath there. Hello. <laughs> well, I think they deserve a beer, seeing as they're working hard. Yeah. Beer! Yeah. Oh my. Wow, thank you so much, Michael. That's all right. For the hard workers. Oh, that's it. How do we undo them? Have you got a tool for this, Phil? I've got this. Wow, look at that. <laughs> I see it's a couple of desperados for a pair of desperados. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, mate. Thanks for coming to help me. I think I'll have a cup of tea instead. <laughs> <laughs> well, cheers anyway. Oh, cheers. Yeah. Oh, what is this? This smells like. The lasagna sauce that I cook, but I haven't cooked it. <laughs> Somebody's found my recipe. That's gonna be lovely. <laughs> Say that again, Gwen. There's a cat stuck behind the wall somewhere. A cat? Yeah, Calliope, I think. I don't know how she got there. I don't know how to get around. <laughs> okay, where's this cat then? It's in the room where we keep all of the clothes and... I was looking for a swimsuit. Yeah. And then there was a mowing and scratching. Okay, so there's a cat stuck behind a wall. Hello. Well, I can Where's hear she... a cat meowing. There's no way into this attic, and the only way into this attic is, is through there. Yeah, I can hear a cat. Right, I'm going to have to get a ladder and go up in there. <laughs> That's the only way up into there. So, oh, there's a ladder. Just there. Oh yeah. Come on. I just saw her. Calliope. Well, at least we know she can get to here, which is a relief. Really... Uh, I'm just on my section. Oh. Let's try and get this ladder. All right, be careful. Stop it, actually. Yeah. Rescue going on. Cat rescue. This ladder's too steep. I need to move this piece of wood. Mom, Mom, yeah. I hope this ladder's safe. Do you want to see the cat too? Come on. 
Head down. Down. It's okay. Puss, puss. Let go. It's all right. Go. Yeah. Oh. Poor little girl. How long have you been up there? And how did you get in there? Oh my god. Oh. All right, go have some dinner and water. You must be. God. Thank you. Just rescued a cat. Yeah. Yeah, yeah this before I run down the stairs. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, Uncle Michael rescued the cat. Well, I'm glad you went in that room because yeah. if, you'd have, if you hadn't gone into that room, yeah. we wouldn't have known the cat was stuck in no. the attic. Cool. Yeah. But I don't, I don't have a clue how she got in it. It can't be through that same hole. I think she climbed up the wall. Yeah. Crazy. Is that door is always shut? Yeah. Is there claw marks on the wall? She couldn't have just climbed up the wall. No, she wouldn't. Unless she got on there. No, she no. wouldn't have climbed up there. There must be another way into that attic that we don't know about. Yep. Oh, secret passageway somewhere, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that's our fun over for today. <laughs> I'll close these doors so that the cats can't get into these yeah. attic rooms. Right. right. I'll leave you to it then. Alright, thank you. It's alright. What are you doing? Where have you been? You've been hiding. You're all dirty, look at you. Have some dinner. Well, it's been the hottest day of the year so far. I think we've reached 34 degrees Celsius. And that is hot for us English people, I must say. Uh, but there's a big storm on its way. So hopefully this humidity should break a bit, but it could get worse. But if there's an amazing storm and it's not too windy, we'll try and send that drone up, get some fantastic shots. Ernest? Who's that? You driving the car? What have you got? Got all the animals on there, look. <laughs> she always shows off when there's a camera. Somebody left a comment on the YouTube saying, I want to see more of the white cat. Well, you've seen more of her today. Jinx. Ernest. Boom. Boom. Just babysitting Ernest while Gwen's out. Huh? Babysitting, aren't I? What are we watching, Ernest? That's you. What are we watching? Peter Rabbit. I used to watch this when I was little. I used to love it. The old Peter Rabbit cartoons. Look. It's Beatrix Potter's cottage in the Lake District. The real one. Wow. I've been there, Ernest. It's lovely. Locking the door from the outside. Look, she's even got spode. That's Peter. Look, he's having a drink from the spode cup. I've been there, Ernest. I walked along that road. That's just by our cottage. Yeah. It's all full of tourists now though. Yeah. No more Victorian children. It's called Near Sori. I don't know where the far Sori is. What's this, Gwen? This is your lasagna. <laughs> Did you get my recipe from the video? Yeah, well, when you went to Stephanie, 
We all crave the lasagna, so I had to watch your video, sit down, write everything you said, and then I tried to make it, and it was lovely. So now I'm making it so you can judge now that you're back. It's probably going to be better than my one. <laughs> oh no, definitely not, but it was really nice. Oh, I can't wait to taste it. Me neither. Well, now it can go in the oven. Lovely. Okay, so uh, I've been away at Stephanie's for three weeks and that's given the walls in here enough time to dry out. So let's have a look and see if they're dry. Yeah, they're much drier now. See before, after I took this old uh, concrete render off, all of the stonework was damp and there was, you could even see that there was a color difference between this and the bit that had lime plaster on. So, uh, starting on Monday, I've got somebody coming to help me to do a lot of work in here. So we're gonna dig out this uh, mud floor um, down far enough so that we can then put down a membrane and lay a concrete floor. Um, and we're gonna have a delivery, a uh, big like, concrete truck that's gonna come and drop the concrete off. And then we're gonna bring it in here with wheelbarrows and level it off. So as soon as that's done, then we can think about getting these walls re-rendered. So I've done a bit of research into lime plaster. So this is gonna need three coats. First of all, it's gonna need something called a scratch coat. And that's where they coat it in a thick layer of lime plaster um, just to kind of even it out and then they'll score it. Uh, and but obviously that gives the, the second layer something to stick to. So then it's gonna need a second coat. I'm not sure what that coat's called. Um, and each coat takes 10 days to dry. So to give this cottage three coats of lime plaster, which it's gonna need, it's gonna take about a month so hopefully, we, as soon as this concrete floor is laid, we can start doing that. Um, I don't know how to do lime plaster, so what I'm gonna to have to do is find somebody that can come and help me and show me how to do it, because um, I'd like to do as much of it uh, as I can by myself, but obviously I'm not an expert, so I'll need supervision with that. Um, as soon as that's done, um, that means that you know we can start having uh, electrics put in and things like that. Um, also, the oak beams above my head they are gonna to need to be sandblasted because I'd like to have them um, a beautiful exposed light oak. I've seen it done, um, especially at my friend Stephanie's. In her barn, they had all of the oak beams um, sandblasted and they look stunning. Um, so I'm going to have that done. Upstairs, there's a, an old ceiling that's desperately in need of being ripped out. Um, and that's probably gonna to have to happen before we even do the floor downstairs. So I'll, I'll show you that now. Right, so there's a lot of work to be done up here starting on Monday. This old ceiling, I mean, look, it's, <laughs> it's gonna come down by itself if we don't take it down soon. So that's gonna have to be all taken out uh, next week um, so that I can expose the, um, the roof, the roof shape, because there's some really gorgeous oak beams up there. And what I want is to make this, because it is quite a large room, but the ceiling feels quite low, so, to make it less cosy and more airy, I'm going to have the roof open right right at the top so you can see the lovely oak beams. Um, and these, they're rotten and they're just thin anyway, they're only holding up the ceiling. So that's all got to be ripped out. Um, and this old oak floor, well, it's, it's in a bit of a state. It's completely rotten in places. Also, because the floor, it's been damp in here for years, the oak has absorbed moisture and it's swollen up. So what's happened is, um, in several places, the floor, like here, has expanded and bowed upwards like that. So um, I'm not sure how much of it we can save. Um, if we can save any, I will save it. But if not, I'm going to have to replace this with a new oak floor. Um, hopefully I can find an old reclaimed one from an old building somewhere. But yeah, there's a lot of work to do here um, and not a lot of time to do it. So starting Monday, this has got to come down. And we've got to do that before we can start downstairs with the concrete floor. So, fingers crossed we can get it done in time. Because I've got somebody coming in to help me on Monday, we've got to be really careful and everyone has voiced their concerns. I do normally wear a mask to protect myself from dust when I'm not filming. Uh, but when I'm filming, I take that off so that you can hear me but I don't normally wear a hard hat or eye protection. So I'm gonna go and get some of that stuff so that on Monday we can wear hard hats, goggles, gloves, everything, and we'll be really well protected because um, 
so far we've done some work but hasn't been anything really dangerous. Uh, the chimney's safe, so that's going to be fine. But um, when we start taking that ceiling down upstairs, we're definitely going to have to wear protection. But um, yeah, a lot of work to be done, and you'll see that next week. Right, well, seeing as I've never actually flown a drone by myself before, I've always had help or I've got someone to do it for me. We paid for it now. It's about time I uh, went solo. Let's get the stuff and go.